Hello and welcome back for some more Fire Emblem Three Houses content. So if you're thinking about getting Fire Emblem Three Houses, but you're still unsure of which house you want to pick in the game, or who all the students are in each house, this video is for you, and I hope that it'll help you to, at the very least, narrow down your options. In Fire Emblem Three Houses, you as the character by Leth will have to pick one of the three houses to teach during your time playing the game. We're still unsure how the game will pan out, and whether or not the three houses will eventually come together at some point later on in the story, so for now, in this video, we'll just be assuming that you won't be recruiting the students from the other houses. So the house that you pick should define your playthrough and determine which students you'll have in your roster. So you'll have to pick the house or the students that stand out the most to you. Let's begin with a quick recap. The three houses in Fire Emblem Three Houses are the Black Eagles, the Blue Lions, and the Golden Deers, each hailing from different nations within the continent of Fodlan. The Black Eagles are led by Edelgard von Hresvelg, who is the next in line to rule the Adrestian Empire to the south. Edelgard is a talented woman with a responsible and dignified heir to her. Story-wise, it seems that she will come to believe that the crests, ancient symbols of power held by nobility, are the root cause for the issues in Fodlan. The crests are to blame. Students from the Adrestian Empire and in the Black Eagles have a heavy emphasis on magic, so this house is likely to have more students with proficiencies or strengths for using magic. Then we have the Blue Lions, led by Dimitri Alexander Blydeed, Prince of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Dimitri is a courteous and refreshing young man who embodies chivalry, yet he carries a shadow. Dimitri's flavor text so far seems to imply that he might have a bit of a chip on his shoulder, and this may be because he is the prince of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. If we look at the map of the continent of Fodlan, it seems that the Church of Seros occupies the neutral land between the Holy Kingdom of Fargus and the Adrestian Empire. Considering it's also the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, there's probably a distinct connection between Dimitri's kingdom and the Church of Seros. Perhaps this will cause conflict throughout the story, especially if it turns out that the church is up to no good. Maybe Dimitri will have to face off against his own men and his family should they side with the church. Or maybe his parents will turn out to be evil. Students from Fargus and in the Blue Lions have a heavy emphasis on using lances, probably because of the kingdom's connections with knights and knighthood. Finally, we have the Golden Deers, led by Claude von Regan. Claude is the son of the noble family that rules the Leicester Alliance. He's a young man who's sociable and smiles. He has the look of a person who carefully considers things, and also possesses a keen insight. A lot of Claude's flavor text seems to indicate that there's a bit more to him than meets the eye. Whereas he seems cheerful and unassuming on the surface, there very well might end up being scheming or a secret buried beneath his collected exterior. Perhaps there are further machinations or plans in place with him that will be revealed much later. Maybe the Leicester Alliance wants to overthrow the Holy Kingdom of Fargus or unseat the Adrestian Empire, and promote a more allied or democratic approach to leadership within Fodlan. Because of the Leicester Alliance being composed of many different smaller houses and groups, the Golden Deers will have more students that are commoners than nobles, unlike other houses where commoners seem to be in the minority. While this doesn't seem to have much of a difference that we know of yet in terms of character stats, considering the noble and commoner classes are pretty much the same thing from what we've seen, it may mean that less students in the Golden Deer house will have crests in comparison to other houses. This could indicate a potentially harder route, though we don't know that yet for sure, or that you'll just have to collect a few more crests and start a bit further behind than the other houses. But we don't know the full information on all the students in each house yet, so maybe they'll still start each house's roster with the same number of crests. We'll have to see. Those from the Leicester Alliance and in the Golden Deers have a heavy emphasis on using bows, so it's likely that a good amount of students will have strengths in bows and will perhaps be best off taking on the fighter class upgrade path. Though we do see some students from the get-go that seem to be more magic or physical based, so I wouldn't worry if you're not the biggest fan of bows. Now that we know the three main lords and the empire, kingdom, and alliance they're hailing from, it's time to talk about the students that we've seen so far that are present within each house. Each house has seven confirmed students that we know of, and hopefully more that you'll be recruiting later on. I want to point out that if I make any suggestions about classes for students, that these aren't the end-all be-all choices for them, and that with this game there will be even more freedom and customization than ever, with classes able to wield more weapon types more freely for the most part, and even characters weak in certain areas able to overcome those weaknesses. The moral here is, do whatever you like, I'll just be sharing my observations of each student. We'll begin with the Black Eagles. When choosing the Black Eagles you'll have access to Edelgard, Hubert, Dorothea, Ferdinand, Bernadetta, Petra, Linhart, and Casper. Edelgard, as we've seen throughout the trailers and screenshots, will definitely favor using axes. She's proficient in axes, swords, and authority, with weak areas in bows and faith magic. 
She will also come with the minor crest of Saros, that we're not sure what it does just yet. Her personal skill is Imperial Bloodline, which boosts her experience gained by 1.2 times. This is also the same as the other main lords. Hubert is the brooding strategist of the Black Eagles, and somewhat of a retainer or servant to Edelgard. He's served her from a young age. He seems to be more aligned with magic classes, as we've consistently seen him using reason magic, or dark and animal magic, in three houses. We've also seen him in the monk class. He looks to be proficient with bows, reason magic, and authority considering his background, and not good at using axes and faith magic. Once again, I do want to point out that students in Fire Emblem Three Houses can, via tutoring from Byleth, actually improve their proficiencies in certain lacking areas via the Blossoming Talent system. After tutoring this level a certain number of times, the student's talent in that level may bloom. Besides just becoming adept at it, the student will be able to learn new skills and abilities. So it seems like even if a student is not good in certain areas, we can take the time and resources to make them better with them, allowing for even more freedom and personalization. So keep that in mind. Also, for the most part, equipped weapons do not change when class changing in this game, so you may want to focus on one main weapon type per student. Magic does appear to be restricted by class though, as some will not have access to it, but in general there will be more weapon freedom within this Fire Emblem than the Fire Emblem titles of the past. Next in the Black Eagles we have Dorothea. Dorothea is a female student who was a popular songstress in the Imperial Capital before she enrolled. She comes from the same Middle Frank Opera Company as Manuela, and admires her. Within the Black Eagles, she's the only commoner, which makes her feel uneasy, but she treats all of her similarly aged friends as equals. We've seen her with strengths in swords, reason magic, and a weakness in faith magic. We've also seen her upgrading into a monk, which seems like a pretty good route for her, though she does lose her hat, sadly. Her personal skill is Songstress, which at the start of each turn, restores adjacent allies' HP by 10%. Now we've got Ferdinand von Egier, the only son of Duke Egier's family a renowned family where the title of Imperial Chancellor is passed down. He's very proud of his family because of its importance and influence. Ferdinand is extremely confident and hates to lose. Princess Edelgard's brilliance ignites a sense of rivalry within him. We've seen him dueling with Sylvain of the Blue Lions, and he's using a training lance, probably a solid pick as a cavalier unit. Or at least that's what he looks like to me. Then there's Bernadetta. We don't have her full character bio just yet, but she's probably pretty shy or socially awkward, considering she's hiding herself underneath a book in the Black Eagles cutscene. We've also seen her fighting in battle and using a bow, so she seems to be a pretty decent pick for the fighter class line. Now we've got Petra. We've seen her a good amount throughout the trailers, and she appears to have strengths in sword usage, considering she's always been wielding them. Looks to me like she'll fit in just fine as one of the series' female Myrmidon characters. She might also be a foreigner or have the common tongue as a second language, considering some of the odd speech patterns from conversations we've seen with her so far. Of course, then we've also got Linhart, who appears to be the perfect fusion of Lin and Reinhardt. Seriously, they must have done this as a joke. We've seen him with strengths in reason and faith magic, and he has a weakness in writing, so he'll need some time before you try to make him a cavalier or a mounted mage knight, if that class line returns. Wait, what? Linhart isn't good on horses? So much for being a Reinhardt and Lin fusion. The dude's a fraud. In all seriousness though, he's pretty clearly adept at magic, and will probably be one of your main mages in the Black Eagles, alongside Hubert and possibly Dorothea. Lastly, there's Casper. We don't know too much about him just yet, aside from the fact that he might be a little impulsive and eat too quickly, but we've seen him punching church soldiers in the face, and also wielding axes, so he's probably a solid fit for the fighter class line. That's it for the Black Eagles so far, now we've got the Blue Lions. When choosing the Blue Lions, you'll have access to Dimitri, Dadu, Felix, Annette, Mercedes, Sylvain, Ash, and Ingrid. Dimitri will be proficient in lances, obviously, but also swords and authority, likely because of his status. He lacks proficiency in axes and reason magic. He will also have the minor crest of Blydeed. His personal skill is Royal Bloodline, which once again boosts his experience gained by 1.2 times. Next we've got Dadu Molinaro, a commoner born in the Daska region, in the northwest of Fargus, and Dimitri's servant. He owes a great debt to Dimitri and is determined to protect him at all costs. He's a bit scary looking and quiet on the surface, but many people don't realize he's actually a gentle and nice young man. We've seen him sparring with Dimitri in the Blue Lions cutscene, and in that cutscene he uses an axe. We've also seen that he is proficient in axes, lances, fighting, or gauntlets in this case, and heavy armor, and lacks ability in faith magic, riding, and flying. Judging by his size, yeah, I would say it'd be pretty hard for a pegasus or a horse to be able to lift him. So that makes sense. Dadu's personal skill is Liege's shield. If he waits without acting, he'll gain defense plus four for one turn. 
Next, there's Felix Hugo Fraldarius, the eldest child of the Duke of Fraldarius. He has a mean attitude, calling his childhood buddy Dimitri a boar. He's sarcastic and fashions himself as a lone wolf, but he takes his sword training seriously, so much so that he'll instantly challenge any strong person to a bout. He also appears in that Blue Lions cutscene sparring with Dimitri and using a sword. Every time we've seen Felix, we've seen him wielding a sword and even doubling enemies, which might prove him to be pretty speedy, so it's very likely that Felix will be well suited towards the Myrmidon class line. Now we've got Annette, who appears to be a commoner when comparing her outfits between her and Mercedes, but we'll talk about her next. Unfortunately, we don't know much about her yet, but in the second batch of Famitsu screenshots, we can see her wielding reason magic, so perhaps she will be one of the more magic-oriented characters for the Blue Lions. Then there's Mercedes, who Annette seems to call Mercy. Judging by her outfit and elegant demeanor, we originally figured she'd be a noble, and it seems we were correct. Mercedes is a kind girl, who watches her surroundings closely and can ignore people in need. She's a former imperial noble, but chose to live in the kingdom as a commoner. She once lived in the mage school of the kingdom's capital. She says she's a bit older than the other students. So basically she was originally from the Adrestian Empire, but is now a commoner from Fargus. In the first trailer we saw her wielding a sword when Edelgard was fighting her, and in the recent batch of Famitsu screenshots, we can see her using a bow. Considering she also lived in the mage school of the kingdom's capital, it's quite possible that she will also be proficient with magic as well. Aside from that though, we don't know much more. Next there's Sylvain Jose Gauthier. We've seen him using a training lance in the second trailer when sparring with Ferdinand of the Black Eagles. He's also got a sword sheathed on him as a part of his design. He definitely seems like a cavalier type to me probably the main Cavalier character of the Blue Lions. Once again, we've yet to get his profile too, but I'm sure we'll get it in the coming days. Then there's Ash. We've seen Ash a few times in the various trailers, and he's seen wielding a bow in the animation. We've also seen him speaking with Dudu, but we don't know much else about him either. Because of his bow wielding, he'll probably be pretty good at taking on the fighter class line. Lastly, there's Ingrid, who we've seen the least of so far. She's been around in the background of some shots, and we've seen her wield a lance, but that's all we know about her. When compared to Felix and Mercedes, she looks like she might be a commoner as well. That wraps up the Blue Lions, and finally we've got the Golden Deers. When choosing the Golden Deers, you'll have access to Claude, Lorenz, Hilda, Raphael, Leone, Ignace, Lizithia, and Marianne. Claude is pretty obviously going to be proficient with bows, as we've seen him exclusively wielding them so far. But he's probably got strengths in authority, and at least one other weapon type as well, just like the other lords. He's also got the minor crest of Regan. His personal skill is Alliance Bloodline, which, like the other lords, boosts his experience gained by 1.2 times. Lorenz is the eldest son of the Duke of Gloucester, a noble from the Leicester Alliance. He's a serious fellow despite his snobbishness, and he's aware of his pride and responsibility as a noble. It seems he's been approaching several females at the monastery with limited success. He also appears to come with his own crest, the minor crest of Gloucester, said to have belonged to Gloucester of Fodlin's Ten Great Heroes. So far, all of the crests that we've had revealed to us seem to originate from them. Once again, we're not sure what it does just yet. His personal skill is Prestigious Noble. When a battalion is deployed, his damage dealt will increase by plus two. We've seen him wielding a lance multiple times so far, and he's also appeared as the class image for Cavalier within the game, so it's likely that this will be a decent role for him. Next we have Hilda. Hilda is the only daughter of Duke Goneril. Since she was pampered by her father and older brother, she tends to slack off and is good at acting cute and buttering people up. She has an easygoing and frivolous manner about her and is a typical nobleman's daughter. She adores fashionable and glamorous things. We've seen her wielding a bow in the original Three Houses trailer and even more recently, an axe. She's also got the minor crest of Goneril. Her personal skill is called Plead or might be called Pester and when an adjacent male ally enters battle, that ally's damage dealt gains plus three. Next we've got Raphael. Raphael is a pretty big brutish looking guy who we've seen wielding an axe and also appears as the new male only brawler class. So it's likely he'll have some proficiency with gauntlets as well, which isn't a stretch considering his stature. I think it's safe to say that he's going to be pretty tough. Following this stereotype, he's probably not great at magic. He kind of looks like the golden deer version of Dudu. Then there's Leone, this girl with the short orange hair. We don't know too much about her just yet, aside from the fact that we've seen her wield lances, and she's playing with a bow in the Golden Deer cutscene. She's also appeared as the preview unit for the fighter class, once again wielding a bow. So I think it's safe to say that like some of the other Golden Deers, she's likely to be bow proficient. Next up we've got Ignace. Like some of the others, Ignace has also been pretty mysterious so far, 
and we don't know too much about him either. Though judging by his looks, I'd say he's probably proficient in some form of magic. He'll probably be one of your main magic units in the Golden Deers. But we've also seen him wielding a bow, too. Now there's Lizithia, another student that we don't know too much about just yet, unfortunately, but we've seen her healing Hilda in battle and being equipped with reason magic, so it's likely that she'll have some proficiency there. Like Ignace, she'll probably be one of your main mage units in the Golden Deers. Marianne is another unfortunately pretty mysterious student, and we've seen her wielding faith magic in screenshots, so that's likely to be an area that she's proficient in, but hopefully we'll learn more about her later. That's it for all the students of the three houses that we know of so far, but we've also seen Manuela Casagranda, the teacher and doctor of the Officer's Academy fighting in battle, and the other teacher, Hanneman von Esser, who was researching the crests profiled too. So it might be possible to recruit teachers and other characters within the Garagmach Monastery. Hopefully you'll be able to get them regardless of which house you choose. Or maybe they'll do something really cool where you even get different teachers with each house too. So now that you've seen what the three houses have to offer, and perhaps what you might be able to expect with these students and main characters, I hope that you're now even just slightly closer to figuring out what house you want to go with when Fire Emblem Three Houses comes out. At the end of the day, especially if the houses do remain separated throughout the game, I'll definitely be playing through as each house, as I think there's great students and interesting facets of each. It's even been hard for me to pick, and I might even change my mind as we get closer to release too. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, you can slash the thumbs up to help out the channel. Also be sure to get subscribed and hit the notification bell so you won't miss out on any of our other Fire Emblem Three Houses videos in the lead up up to the game's launch. Follow us on Twitter for the latest Fire Emblem Three Houses news and information, and check out our Discord server for further discussion beyond this video. Thank you to all of my amazing patrons who helped me to continue producing content like this, and I will see you all next time. Yeah, it's not.